Welcome to another quick trip. Today's trip is back in the Sandias. After about a month or month and a half of being closed due to fire danger, the Sandias are open and we can get back in them. And today we're going up there, Palomas Peak. Palomas is Spanish for dove, and that's where we're going. So we came across this on the trail. This is a star fungus. Probably has a much more complicated Latin name, but that's what we call it. But what's interesting is the spores that are in here. Now, hopefully this will work. We're going to pop it and see if uh, the spores come out. Of course. Made a liar out of me. It's probably too wet for them to come out like a puff of smoke. But that's usually what happens. Daniel has a weird and interesting hobby where he takes pictures of matchbox cars out in the wilderness. Stay tuned for a future video about his weird little piccadillo. So we found this track in the mud here and I put one of Daniel's matchboxes here for scale so you can kind of get an idea of the size. It's pretty big and it's round. So the initial thing that that would tell us is that it's a possibly a cat track. But a lot of people will right away say, oh, but here's these claw marks. But a lot of times cats, especially in the mud, will extend their claws a little bit for traction. So we're not sure if this is a cat track or if it's a dog track or, or what, but there are no other human tracks around it, which is often the prime indicator for dog tracks. It's awfully big for coyote, but it is. Over on this hillside are a whole bunch of dead fir trees. And that's a, uh, another sign of our ongoing drought and climate change uh, because these trees are killed by something called a tussock moth. And one of the problems with things like tussock moths and bark beetles is as the temperature rises, they have more time to go through a life cycle. So where we used to have one life cycle of these creatures in a summer, sometimes now we can have two. If you have two they can do twice the damage especially when these trees are stressed and these are definitely stressed because they're north facing but a little bit lower elevation than they should be so they're not getting the water that they need so across the way over here there is a old burn scar and by old i mean at least 25 years uh for as long as i've been coming into the sandias that burn scar has been there but all the dead trees and all have fallen. So just thought I'd throw that in there to show how long and what kind of recovery we can expect from these massive fires that have been plaguing uh, New Mexico all spring and summer. One of the cool things about coming out after rainy weather is we find all kinds of weird fungi and stuff that just usually isn't out here in the arid southwest. I really have no idea what this is, but it's really pretty cool. You know our videos always got to have a little bit of scat. This one's really interesting because it kind of shows a cross section of a coyote's diet. It's got juniper, uh, seeds in it, but then it's black. The black could uh, be bear corn. It could be uh, something meat, and it's got little flecks of white in it. Uh, I would surmise that those are bones. So pretty cool pile of uh, coyote scat here. Here's a little bit of uh, false mock orange or cliff fendler bush. I believe this plant was first identified by the Lewis and Clark expedition in 1804. So we found a geocache right here. 
We're gonna see what's in it and when the last time somebody found it was. So the lighting's not all that great, but we can see from the log that the last time somebody was here was in March of this year. Uh, Daniel and I, I signed it, Viper and Bandit from Sandia Mountain Natural History Center. And then if we look in here, there's not a whole lot. There's a yo-yo, a uh, pin from the state of Louisiana, a rubber ducky, and of course, the great classic Jimmy Stewart in Alfred Hitchcock's rope VCR. Now, it just so happens we are lucky enough that I'm pretty sure Daniel probably hauled up a VCR and a uh, TV. No, I didn't. So oh. Not this time. We didn't even have the solar panel that we could have hooked up, got that VCR going. We'd had a great afternoon watching Jimmy Stewart. Well, so much for that bit of fun. We'll have to wait and see how that one turns out. Paul and I often go walking and go places that we've never been before. And so today it's kind of cool because we're in an area that we're seeing a different perspective of. And from here, we're going to see something really cool. We see little the little scars almost here behind the burn area. That's going to be the ski area. We go right above it and we can see the top. We actually brought out the long eye and we can see the top of the tram. Coming across, we're going to see... Ah, we're going to see the towers right here. And this is a proper crest proper. And then you also have the stuff where you can go to. Um, and then over here, we have North Peak. And between the crest proper and North Peak is another burn area. And that burned about five or six years ago. So a lot of different things. We're seeing a lot of different things from a different angle. So that is Palomas Peak. Depending on where I put this in the video, that's where we're going, or that's where we've been. Uh, it turned out to be actually a harder hike than we anticipated. Uh, much steeper and uh, rockier than, than I initially thought, but it was fun.